Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Palo Alto at the Four Seasons Hotel at the Church Off event. It's called Security in the Boardroom. It's a, an annual event they do. They do a couple every year. And we're excited to be here because the security uh, conversation doesn't really go to the boardroom that often in most of the shows that we go to. So we're excited to, uh, to be here. And Steve Daly is our next guest. He's the president and CEO of Avanti. Steve, welcome. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So they said you're the ransomware guy when we were preparing to come in here. Right so on, right what, on. Uh, what special relationship does Avanti have with ransomware? Uh, we do a lot of it. Oh, you do a lot no, of it. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we, um, we actually, we have a number of solutions to help customers so that they, they don't they don't fall prey right. to, to to these phishing attacks, the, the the stuff that kind of allows somebody to come in and, and hijack your systems and um, and and be able to ransom you right for, for this stuff. So so why why do you see you know from where you're sitting the growth in the ransomware in terms of you know you used to always be hacking and phishing and people doing stupid things, yeah. clicking on things they're not supposed to, but now suddenly you know it's got much more aggressive. Now it's got this kind of ransomware. A piece to it. Why do you see that? Evolving? Well, I see a couple things happening uh, in the industry. One is uh, I like to think of it as you think about medieval times, right? And you had these castles, uh, and the castles had these walls, their moats are very well protected. Um, that's what our data centers have become like. We've got really good security. We've got really good ability to keep um, the the assets that are that are behind the firewall in the data center very secure. So as as you know as the as the bad guys keep trying to attack and they keep you know, falling against the wall and getting crushed, they start to look at different ways to get past the walls. And what right. they realize is that um, you, you and me, as we're out in the we're out in the wild, we're like the guys that go outside of the wall. We're out there and, and we're getting infected. We're getting attacked. We're getting. They realize that that's the easiest way for us to for them to get back in behind the wall. Because if they can infect us, right, then we'll take them back behind the wall through our credentials and our security and get them into where they really want to be, which is where personal, uh, personally identifiable information is or, or the high value assets are. And so, so I think they've recognized that it's harder and harder to attack directly into the data centers. And so let's go at the endpoints. Let's go attack the weak point and get on those and let them take us back into the data center. And so they look at, they look at us and they say, okay, well, how, how are we going to get Steve to to let us use his credentials, and the best way for them to do that is to um, is to fish us and to, and to 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 bring in technology that we accidentally click on, right, and, and, right. and once they get there, then then they've got access to us. And so, um, this is just an evolution of that idea that says, okay, well, uh, I could get back into the data center. Why don't I just charge this guy just to let me, you know, get let him get back to the data that that he wants access to? And so, it's I think it's just an evolution. Uh, sophistication, if you will, right. um, in the bad actors uh, and their ability to uh, extort, you know, extort value out of out of companies. The other trend we hear about is kind of a rise of the state-sponsored. You know, yeah. it's not just the kid living in his mom's basement anymore who's right. hacking around, maybe even for fun, right? Yeah. Just because he could and to, yeah. and to brag to other hackers, but really it's state sponsored. So, you know, the motivations behind, the powers behind, the investment behind, the resources behind different. is very, very different. Yeah, and, and, and in that case, well, when you think about ransomware, this really is about somebody who's trying to make some money. State sponsored isn't, they're, they're not trying to make money, right? right. It's not that they're, they're trying to cut their budget right. deficit by ransomwareing a bunch of Americans type of thing. What, what, they're, they're, what they're after is they really are trying to get behind the moat, behind the walls of the castle. And they, they know the best way for that to do is right. to, to infect me so that I take that, that, that virus, I take that, you know, that sickness back into the data center because they, when, they, when, they, when I come to the door, they're going to drop the drawbridge, they're going to let me in because they know me. Right. Uh, and so, that, that, so it, the, the idea of phishing, the idea of, of you know, getting me to click on something that I shouldn't click on is, is, is that, that that te those techniques really are really powerful, right. because one, you can either ransom somebody and get and you know and and to get their data back, or you can use that as a vehicle to slip back into the right. behind the wall. But it's so interesting. The the more you read up on this topic, there's there's so many just big gaping holes mm -hmm. where people are just not applying patches and they're not doing. A right. It seems like a lot of really simple. Yeah. things and then on the other hand you know people pr in process and culture and like you said people are the weakest link my favorite story somebody said one time they came to like the company picnic website which was hanging off the corporate website and I don't yeah. know if they said they were the plastic fork vendor or something but the, you know that was the way <laughs> they, they infiltrated the, the company right with the, the spork yeah. um, 
So as you're talking to clients, um, how often do you see that they're just taking care of the basics before yeah. you can really even start to get into some of the more advanced techniques? And I think that's a big challenge for companies. And, and I think it comes back to, particularly when we start to talk about end user computing, um, the way that the, the industry has evolved has, has, is very fragmented in IT, the way that IT decides to support us right. and, and our devices. Right. Uh, you think about it, in, in an IT organization, there'll be a desktop operations group, there'll be a mobile group if we're, if we're using our mobile phones instead of our desktops. There's a security group, there's a, there's a service delivery, there's a service support group. They're all separate siloed organizations that are responsible for ultimately keeping us up and running and secure. But when they're siloed like that, it's really hard for IT to be able to say, okay, well, let's do the basic hygiene. Let's make sure that the desktop operations group is patching these things in a, in a normal way. Let's make sure the asset team ha is bringing in assets and they're tracking through the life cycle, making sure that the software on there is up to date, those types of things. Make sure that the security team has visibility across all that. It's so, it's so siloed. Right. There's no way that IT can it's really hard for IT to really bring that together. And I think that's that's a fundamental problem with the way that, that we're organized. And, and I think that has to change. I think right. the people process side of the thing is we have to start to, to bring and unify IT, particularly when you're talking about end user compute environments, uh, because the way it's fragmented is one, it's really expensive. It's costly, right? You've got all these different teams that have to talk and you have to stitch technology together and IT is responsible for that. And two, it becomes really, really risky just because uh, what you brought up is, you know, this team is concerned, has their own remit. It's not necessarily 100% security and so patching falls to the bottom of the list. Uh, and, and yet for the security guy, you know, most patch, most uh, exploits are done on, uh, on exploits that have had a patch available for at least nine months. So it's not that yeah. it's it's not that it's a brand new thing, zero right. day that just right. pops into the end. It's that the teams haven't haven't patched the systems right. uh, in nine months. It's it's crazy. And so so I think if we can if we can break down, we can unify IT. We can bring break down those silos. Then I think we got a much better chance of doing the basic hygiene um, and getting and getting getting all the technologies together in a way that allows IT to really address this problem and really focus, it's, it's really a cultural change. Mm -hmm. IT is going to have to change it and, and the only way for a CIO to, to be able to affect this change is there has to be some organizational consolidation. Right. right. And as you, as, as you seem kind of the growth of cloud, right? Public mm -hmm. clouds and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and private clouds where uh, some of that security um, responsibility, right, can be shifted off to Microsoft Azure team or to the AWS team. Yeah. Now, it's interesting, on one hand, they've got massive resources that they can deploy right. that no individual company or very few individual companies have. On the other hand, you still have to hit the knobs, even you know the most recent AWS breach is somebody mm -hmm. just didn't turn the knob on right. to, 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 to close it down. So are you, are you seeing, because I imagine from a smaller mid-sized company, you know the the security challenges across all these fronts that are that are escalating at a rapid rate. Really tough to have the resources to fight. So right. are they adopting more? Not necessarily always cloud, but you know, kind of larger solutions that they can leverage so they don't have all that responsibility. I on think their that's own heads. some of the impetus behind a move to cloud. Um, I think you know the challenge is still when you're talking about end user computing. Right. All we're talking about is moving the castle and the moat to somebody else's castle and moat. Right, You're, you still, as a, as a company, you still got all these users of IT that have their own devices that are wandering around get out the forest, pipes. right? And and <laughs> and, and maybe maybe it, they can get you back in, and maybe maybe that moat might be a little better than the one I could build myself. But right. I still I'm still held responsible for, you know, a ransomware attack doesn't matter if I'm using Azure. Right. Right. It's if I'm using a if I'm using a Windows laptop and somebody tells me that I can win a million dollars and I click on that, bang. Right. That that's 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 a problem for me as a healthcare provider, for instance. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of castle I've got built by Microsoft or or, or Amazon or Google or whoever. Um, it, I'm still responsible right. for that right. piece of it. Uh, and that's not going to change. With oh, the, with Steve, the, so much to talk about. We didn't even get into IoT and. Um, Oh, yeah, and that, the increasing attack surface area of our cars and washing machines and watches. Right. 
That's All right. All right. Well, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yes, and, uh, good to meet look you. Look forward to our next yeah. conversation. We'll jump into the IoT. All right. All right. He's Steve Daly. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching The Cube. We're at the Chertoff Security in the Boardroom event in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.